Good morning to you. It's 823, and we welcome to the room a declutter and organizational expert. Yay! And the host of a new HGTV series called Consumed, which debuts on Tuesday, Jill Pollock is in the room. Yay! Yay! You know this is my favorite thing, decluttering. Oh, my God. We'll go to lunch and talk all about it. I love it because I just think when you clean it up, it just looks so much better, and it really clears your mind. It totally does. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, the show. How is the show set up? So the show is about... Consumed is about people who have too much stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, really too much stuff, but not the sort of hoarder's version of too much stuff. Really, regular people like me and you, who life has gotten in the way. And, um, you know, they're not using their house properly, right? Their dining room table is a storage unit, basically, and Mm -hmm. the guest room is, you know, more storage. And they're not using their house right. So I go in, and I assess their home. And we sort of walk around, and I figure out why the clutter is there, how it got there, you know, Psychologically, do a little psych 101. That's psych 101. Which is a good thing. Okay, what's one of the main things of psychologically why people do that? They don't have time or they don't want to part no, with No, no, no. I mean deep psychology. Oh, like, like I was a poor child and I didn't get enough clothing or um, I don't feel good enough and so I'm going to be the best mom I can be by clothing my kids with the cutest clothes or... Um, you know, many reasons why we why you hold on to things. I, I, I lost both of my parents, and so I feel guilty that I'm, you know, maybe deep down yeah. still alive, so I'm keeping everything they ever had in my home. You right, know, right. a lot of reasons why people keep stuff. Well, the, you know, and with all the things that people keep stuff, you get you yourself have these uh, this, this history, mm. and then you have a partner who also has a history, and then both of you come together with all your stuff, yeah. and if one of them decides that they want to clean up, it's hard to negotiate with the other person. Yeah, yeah. So how do you do that? Oh, gosh. I'm constantly in the middle of couples. They're like, tell him that he shouldn't blah, 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 or tell her that he, he's got to get rid of this. So there's a lot of management of, of that. But really, you know, just like anything with couples and families, I mean, you have to communicate, and you really have to make bargains with each other yeah. and, and, and concessions and be realistic. I mean, is, you know, your grandmother's um, hundred-year-old photo of her as a baby as important as, like, maybe your, you know, plastic cup that you had in college? Like, let's be honest. What's, you know what I mean? Let's <laughs> it just, that, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, plastic cups to Granny's pictures. So, you mean, you have to be, yeah. you really have to talk about what's of value. And then, uh, and then again, I never, people always think, uh-oh, Jill's coming. She's going to make me get rid of everything. And I, I can't, I mean, I can never do that. And if I did do that, especially, you know, on the show, then what's going to happen? They're just going to go into the garbage or the dumpster, pick it out, be mad at me, and then kibosh the whole Mm -hmm. experience. And really, it's meant to be a positive experience for these people. We go in, we take everything out of the house. Everything. Everything. Well, I mean, we leave a bed and like a cup and a plate. But yeah. Essentials. You leave yeah. the essentials. the bare and, essentials. And then they see how much space they have. I know, and that's really dramatic to see. Like, you know, when you're home, when you're sort of, I, I tell people all the time, own your stuff, don't let your stuff own you. And when they are living amongst their stuff because it's like, oh, well, there's a box and a bin. And when you're living amongst plastic bins in your living room, is that? Oh. That is verging on, you know, uncivilized. Now, yeah. what, what are some of the gross and weirdest things you've seen. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Yes, well, (laughs) this this is where it gets good. Really? Yeah. Okay, so, um, I mean, I'm just going to start out with like a 20-year-old pregnancy test. You're kidding. I am not kidding. And here's the thing is, like, I was out to dinner with a friend last night. She's like, I still have mine. And I said, God willing, you have the child to prove it. So why are you saving a urine soap stick? Disgusting, right? I mean, honey, really? Did you please tell me you just found that in the bathroom and it was stayed in the bathroom or was it another place? No, it was like in a plastic bag and something like, really? Uh, uh, 25-year-old beard hair. On one of the episodes, the man, we found a cup. It was among his memorabilia. And I looked at it. I was a little afraid. Of course, I wasn't, like, touching it. But I yeah, said, yeah, what right, is right. this? And he goes, oh, that's my beard hair. I have my first beard, and I, I trimmed my oh, beard. I just no. thought, oh, my God. <laughs> a cast that a woman had. She broke her leg, and then she gave birth in the cast because her leg was broken. But the child was 18 years old. So the cast was an 18-year-old Cast. Lo- where was the location of the cast? Just I have to ask. It was in her closet. In okay. Her okay. Okay. I know, okay. Like oh. weirdness. Of Isn't it amazing how many people have garages that they can't? 
put Part cars in. You, you can't I put mean, the car in it's there. It's very true. It's very true. We're cycling, some broken beds, oh. uh, some uh, you know bikes that don't work. So where, so if we're to start, like we're going to watch the show mm-hmm. for sure. I can't wait. Mm. But with, where to start this weekend? Because we got to kind of get organized for school and everything. Where are we going to get organized, and how are we going to do it? Like, like pick a room. Okay, so for school, so for to go organize kids. That's yeah. you know always a tough thing. You obviously want to give them tools and teach them like as much as you say. Bring your plate to the yeah. sink when you're done eating your plate. When you come home, please hang up your coat and your backpack and things like that. But you have to make it easy for them and not ask too much of them. So really, a lot of people want to think that their entryway, you know, where they come in and out most of the time, should look pretty. You know, we should have a, a pretty wood table with some flowers there. But be honest, it needs to be practical. Yeah. So having a proper like mudroom entryway that that makes sense, a place to sit if right. you can. Exactly. Take your boots off. Yeah. Hang tons of hooks. I have three I have two rows of hooks on each wall in my entryway because what am I you know I'm not serving tea to the queen in there yeah. it's my entryway I want to hang up my coat and put my you know purse up there keys etc so you know you can hang up hats so an en- a proper entryway where you can dump stuff, right, 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 and and hopefully like a command central where you can put your to- phone charger and your purse and your keys. Always have a place where you put your keys. Do you put your toothbrush back in the same place every night? I do. Every I morning, do. I do. Why do people ri- eat, reinvent where to put their keys every time they walk in the house? And then they can't like, find them. Get, right. And Why I, do we do that? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I've got to figure that out. But they say don't put it near the front door because yeah. someone could take your car. Yeah. yeah. So we got to figure that out. Mm-hmm. That way we. Along the same the place all the time. Well, but it has to be kind of near the front door because what are you going to put them in your bedroom? And every time you're leaving the house, you got to go to the bedroom. Well, I mean, that's something we've got to figure out. Are you going to come back and visit us sometime? I'm yeah? desperate to. Okay. Yeah. I like the concept of this show. Now we get started. Well, I know. I the want concept to is good because you empty the house and then they live with the bare essentials and then you for re- thirty days. So, and then they and re-add the stuff that they really need and the rest gets. Well, we take it all to a warehouse. So what's genius about the show is that they have to go through the boxes in a warehouse. So it's very impersonal. And they, after 30 days of living without it, they really... It's not days. just like, hi, we took it away for two days and make some decisions. 30 days is a long time to reorient your brain. And so when they're in the warehouse, they're able to be like, need it, don't need it, need it, don't need it. And then they have a genius HGTV makeover in the end. Woohoo! Beautiful. <laughs> right, Jill Pollock, nice to meet you. And she's nice the host of a new HGTV series called Consumed and yeah. a debut on Tuesday night. And you know what? We'll be inspired. We'll want to organize our places as well. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you.